In honor of feminism, which has been sweeping our country for decades, I decided to give a biblical tribute to this subject. Since our news media and college universities have been scouring the dustbins of history, trying to find some women to prop up and display to us as good examples of girl power, I thought I would help them out. In looking at their list, we are treated to Billie Jean King, the tennis player who bravely played a tennis match against some old guy who may have been her father. Of course, just kidding. I would have double-checked these facts more closely, but I fell asleep from sheer boredom. This was called the Battle of the Sexes in 1973, which turned out to be a big year for feminists. I guess what bores me is the lack of substance in the feminist movement. I guess I'm spoiled when I think of how Sergeant York single-handedly captured over 130 German soldiers in World War I. Or Fireman Matt Holliday, who jumped into a burning building to save a 70-year-old woman. That's someone to look up to. And the untold number of people that save lives, like this mother who got to spend her first Mother's Day grabbing a knife and helping save her husband and newborn daughter from a home intruder. Now that's a woman to talk about. Not a lesbian tennis player who can outscore an old guy. Don't bore us with Billie Jean and her backswing. There are thousands of females who would have made better role models for little girls to look up to. Take, for instance, Queen Elizabeth I of England. She didn't marry into her job like a lot of feminists do. In fact, listen up, feminists. She never married. She survived being thrown into prison was threatened by the Catholics to get married to a Catholic, but refused. Spain even tried to defeat her with the Spanish Armada, and she even was the inspiration when they named a large plot of land after Queen Elizabeth called Virginia. But let's face it, Queen Elizabeth I had morals, and she read her Bible, so she wouldn't qualify these days for being included in the top ten lists of feminists. According to our news media, and since all they know how to do is cheerlead for stale old tennis players, I'll come to their rescue and give them the most important feminist in the Bible, Jezebel. I do this because the average news media employee wouldn't know how to find the Gospel of John without an index. And the news media is very lazy, so they won't mind if I do all the heavy lifting for them. Jezebel has all the modern-day qualifications to be recognized for her many achievements. Like most modern feminists, she did absolutely nothing to earn her position of authority. Yep, it was handed to her. Then, like most feminists that crave power, she married a spineless man who also had done nothing spectacular to earn his position of authority. And once she became a queen, she started acting like a king. This is very important to modern-day feminists. She uses the king's signet ring to order people around and immediately attack someone who had private property, which is also a fringe benefit to modern-day feminists. It seems to go hand-in-hand hand with communism's hatred for private property. Once the private property owner is killed for not turning his private property over to the government, Jezebel then gets told that she's bad and evil by a man of God, so she flips out. Elijah's a manly man and sleeps outside most nights, and he's also a man of God. Both of those things really bother feminists, especially when a godly man speaks with authority and exposes the rampant feminism. How dare the prophet of God not recognize her brilliance? Hey, look, I managed to say that with a straight face. Jezebel's husband dies, which is okay with feminism because, after all, He's a man, and his usefulness was over anyway, because according to feminism, when a man's usefulness is over, well, they just get in the way. The next time we hear about Jezebel is when she's in a building with a bunch of eunuchs. But God sends another man's man to deal with the feminist Jezebel, and he drives a chariot over to see Jezebel. And news spreads, and Jezebel hears about it. So what does the greatest feminist of all time do? Does she attack him face to face, proving her superiority over this man? No. She puts on makeup. Just let that sink in for a while. 
Now, I want to put in a good word for makeup. Deep down, I'm kind of glad that most feminists apply makeup because most of them really need it. But the greatest feminist of all time applies makeup before seeing this manly man that's come to kill her. And it might have worked, but the manly man named Jehu doesn't even address her or get anywhere near her, which is a wise thing to do. Don't even address them. Feminists probably couldn't handle your logic anyway. Instead, he speaks to the eunuchs and tells the eunuchs to toss her out the window, and the eunuchs threw her out the window. I bet those eunuchs lived happily ever after, not having to put up with her anymore. Meanwhile, the horses trampled the body of Jezebel, and her blood was splattered upon the wall, and the blood was splattered on the horses as well. And Jehu trod her underfoot. Then the manly man went inside and had an awesome lunch. He probably had quite the appetite after riding those chariots around. There's nothing like the sense of accomplishment knowing you, you've done the Lord's work. And speaking of building up quite the appetite, all the dogs in the neighborhood also were doing the Lord's work, and they dined like never before. Now, after a good meal, you have to clean up any of the leftovers, so the manly man orders his servants to go outside and bury the body of Jezebel. After all, she was a king's daughter. But the servants go to find her body, and all they find are five easy pieces. Her skull her feet, and the palms of her hands. Which is good news because that means those cute little puppies were well fed that day. And we all need to make sure those little innocent animals get plenty to eat. I'm sure all the feminists that work for animal rights organizations would agree with me on that subject and join in on this celebration. Now, normally that would end the story, but I really wasn't kidding when I said that Jezebel was the ultimate feminist in our modern era. The Bible says that the spirit of Jezebel will be very active in the future. A spirit that can get you killed and turn your property over to the government. Your ministry turned over to the government. Your testimony, your finances, your family turned over to the government. It seems that these feminists never truly go away even after rejection. They never stay buried in the dustbin of history. Instead of propping up losers who don't accomplish anything important so that little girls can worship them, why not train young children to live by the teachings of the greatest philosopher, the greatest provider, the greatest teacher, the greatest lover, the greatest motivator, the greatest healer, and the greatest overachiever of all time? The teachings of Jesus should be propped up and admired by school children all over the world, and if you get saved today, then you will have hitched your wagon to the greatest God that anyone could have ever hoped for. Now, I realize this message was probably rougher than the smooth and polished messages some of you are used to, so I'll leave you with something warm and fuzzy. <laughs>